Hello, I'm Harji. I'm a third year medical student down here at Warwick. I started off as a paramedic um, way back in the in the early 2000s and the opportunity came up for me to, to do medicine and I, and I took it. I guess I'm slightly different from the rest of the cohort in that I'm 40-something I'm and I come along with a mortgage and kids and a, and a wife. It brings its own fantastic, um, I want to say opportunities, but it's definitely obstacles. Why change from being a paramedic to come and study medicine? Uh, well, I've done it for long enough, I thought. Um, being a paramedic is definitely a young, a young person's game. You can end up in quite strange situations, crawling through ditches, walk, go, going through car sunroofs, and, and really quite a lot of heavy lifting. So I thought, do you know what, I'm getting on a bit. If I'm ever gonna do medicine, now's the time. And so I applied, and I think the rest you can see. Were you successful in your first cycle of entry? Um, yeah, I was successful in my first cycle of entry, but I, I very much tailored my my application to one university, which was Warwick, and they placed quite a lot of emphasis on experience. And obviously, um, before I was a paramedic, I was a physio, so so I think that gave me quite a few points. And also, they're one of the very few unis that that seem to just focus on what your degree results are. I think that's still being quite good stead. How have you found adjusting to being a student again? Um, it's difficult, really difficult. I think one thing it took me a while to realise was that basically what they've done, they've gathered all the really smart people from every school and put them in one place. Um, and then if you're put into the middle of that, you will find that everyone's really intelligent, everyone's really motivated, and it can be quite disheartening and it can drag you down, um, especially having not studied for a while and not having the brain of a 20-something year old and having a mortgage to pay and kids to, 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 to bring up. It can, it can get you down, but I think on the flip side of that, everyone here could do absolutely anything they wanted and they've chosen to do medicine. And I think that's something you need to appreciate, that they want to do something that's, that's gonna better humankind. And once you realise that, you respect them for what they are. And they want to help you. They don't, they don't, they're not trying to be horrible to you. It's just, it's just who they are. They are driven, they are intelligent. Um, and once you get past that hurdle, not too bad. But otherwise, not being paid, um, not being able to see the kids, it's, it's temporary. I think you learn to you learn to deal with that, and that's not as big an issue as actually getting here and, and meeting your cohort. What strategies did you, you know, do you have in place for making sure that you don't sacrifice? Mm, I think balancing everything. In the first year, especially here at Warwick, it's a very intense year. And to be honest with you, I went in and I just worked solid. And when I started, um, my son, for example, he could read, he was reading The Ball Is Red. And by the time I'd finished, he was, he was reading whole sentences off the screen and, and I feel quite sad that I missed that. But I don't think I would have got through first year had I not been so selfish with my time. What I did do was reflect on that and, and since then what I have dedicated, um, well made promises to myself I should say in that I will do every piece of homework with them, we will go on one muddy walk a week, I will take them to the library and I will spend at least half an hour every day asking them how their day's been. Um, that's helped with the fact that the workload does reduce slightly um, and because it's more clinical in my experience um, as a paramedic and a physio, I feel better able to cope with it. But you've just got to dedicate small amounts of time and you've got to keep to those because the workload in medicine, I think it would, it would take up every, every hour of the day, including sleep, if you let it. And unless you strike that balance between work and every other priority you have, you're, you're going to struggle. Do you think that has affected the way in which you will ultimately practice or change the doctor that you will be? Um, I would say it doesn't matter what profession you're in, being a parent does change how you interact with people. Um, quite a sad subject is, especially you know, in, in any walk of life, but in the ambulance service, you do get called out to quite a few poorly kiddies. Now before children, I, I, I think I failed to recognise that the fact that they are kids and they are people and you almost have an emotional detachment from them. Having had children, you suddenly you make that link and it's not somebody else's kid, it's your kid that's poorly in front of you. And I think it does take a bigger chunk out of you. But on, again, on the, on the plus side of that is that you, you seem to just care that bit more. You're quite willing to argue with people, especially when you get into hospital, that they should be doing something or they, or they, need, to, they need to reconsider their actions. Or I suppose it almost makes you more, more attuned to, to what that kid needs. So yeah, being a parent, I think, does make a make a bit of a difference, especially when it comes to, to poorly kiddies. Do you have any particular career aspirations for yourself in terms of specialty or what you want to achieve? <sighs> That's an interesting question. Um, I've reached the age of 40 and I don't know what I'm doing with my life. So, <laughs> so I don't know is the truth. 
Um, a very easy option with me for me would be to go down the emergency route, um, but I think I'd probably be selling myself short. If I wanted to do that, there are many, many roles already. From in paramedics, you can have the, a the ACP role, and to do that, you don't take four years out of, out of working. You don't take four years out of your pension, um, and you don't lose all that time that you could be spending with family. Um, so if you want to do something similar to what you're already doing, I'd recommend look at the advanced roles because that'll probably suit you fine. Um, for me, I tend to take each placement as it comes. Um, at the moment, um, I know I don't want to do psychiatry because it seems to be a very different um, kettle of fish to, to what I am used to doing, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, quite enjoy paediatrics, but was that a good placement or is it a good career? I don't know. So the nice thing is you get exposed to every specialty repeatedly. So I guess I can start making decisions after I've in the foundation program or even take a, an F3 where you do an extra year and and work it out so honestly don't know at the moment let's go with highlight okay highlight was I think getting through first year um, again part of this is my fault in that I'm trying to compare myself to people who are incredibly intelligent and incredibly driven um, I, I'm none of those things if I'm honest with you um, and then you kind of feel you feel very bad that you're not keeping up to their standard. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is the highlight definitely was doing pretty well in first year exams and actually realizing, do you know what? If I, I've got to realize that I've got to do this my own way and I can't really be copying other people um, because they take a very different step, a very different view to learning. And yeah, it's that realization that I can do this was definitely the highlight, that I can make it to the end. Cool. And what about something that um, either didn't go as well as you expected or just was different? Um, okay, so things that weren't expected. Um, I had a very, I think, a very rose-tinted view of medical school in that um, you wear a white coat, a consultant takes you under their wing and you go around and you learn things on a very one-to-one -one basis. The truth is very different. Um, I don't know if it applies to every medical school, but Warwick, they take in a large cohort. So you do tend to, to be shuffled around in a very organized manner, and you can be in quite large groups, which I don't think is fantastic for learning, if I'm honest, but that's my opinion. But I guess you need to, you need to get everybody through and everyone needs to have a similar experience. Um, and I guess the other, the other not expected thing is sometimes learning doesn't really occur um, as I think you would expect. Um, people aren't always receptive to you asking for help um, and they don't always want you there and sometimes you can have two or three medical students turn up at the same place and somebody has to go away so that can be a bit disappointing. What's your living arrangement at medical school when okay. you came to Warwick? I did pretty well at the UK CAT um, and then it got to the point where this is serious I could potentially get in um, so I spoke to, I said to my wife well what shall I do and she said well apply but don't don't change school for the kids um, it took my son a very long time to get settled at school and I don't think we'd want him to, to go through all that again. And really looking at the map, um, Warwick was the only place that I could go to while still living at home. Um, so I commute up from Northampton every day, which is about a 40 minute journey to the university and every hospital. It takes roughly the same amount of time. I tend to leave quite early because I can't be dealing with traffic and I like to have a good parking spot. Um, but on the plus side of that, um, I get a warm meal. Um, I get to live at home um, and, it, and it's doable. What one piece of advice would you impart to any incoming medical student? You have to want to do medicine. It's not something that you think, mm, maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's an incredibly intense course. Um, if you are coming as a mature student, you are gonna lose earnings. Um, and, there's prob and if you're thinking, mm, maybe I will because it looks good, I wouldn't go, go do an advanced role somewhere else. Um, find out what medicine is and if you really want to do it, you have to commit. What's the biggest lesson that you took away from being a paramedic that you can now apply to medicine? I think as a paramedic, you you don't have any you don't have any invest you don't have any blood tests, you don't have any X ray machines. All you really do is have your is have your mouth and, and what you can see in front of you. Um, and I think just that ability to, to look at somebody, recognise they are poorly. Um, recognise that they are agitated. I think it stands me in good stead, not just comparing myself to medical students, but comparing myself to other doctors as well. Um, 
and I think just, for example, walking down a, a busy corridor, I, I, I'm in a better position to pick out the two or three people who, who look bad than I think, I would say as even a registrar, and I think that's, that's something that's going to stand me in good stead later. How, how do you feel about your dad being in medical school? Mm. <laughs> Are you proud? Are you annoyed? Proud. Proud. Do you think he's going to be a good doctor? Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things they did say to me, you just reminded me actually, when I was studying, this one came up to me and said, how come you don't play with us anymore? And it was, it was a very sad moment because I think she thought she'd been naughty, not actually realising that all I'm doing is just trying to learn medicine stuff. So yeah, that can get you down sometimes. But most of the time, I dig my stethoscope from one place, I find my ID cards in another, pen torches come and go, because I think, I think they get it. And they often ask, when are you finished? And they both realise that in a couple of years it'll be over and they'll get Dad back full time. So what sorts of things do you all still do together? Uh, Play with Lego. Build Lego. Muddy walks. Yeah. We go to the library. What Lego did you build recently? Uh, I built uh, a, Le a Lego next on like castle. A Jago helicopter. Cool. A, some Indian Lego. Keep rip off Indian Lego, which is just rubbish because it keeps falling to pieces. What are you all going to do when Dad finishes at medical school? Play with him. Play, play on the Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Very good. Constantly. Okay. <laughs> yep, yeah, no, good luck. If you really want to do it, then do it because you only live once. Um, I'm happy to be contacted if you want to know more. And I think my email address will be appearing shortly. Bye. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Means bye bye.